Oh, God. I've managed to go to the store today without too much pain. I have to lean on a shopping cart in order to walk up, walk, or be able to walk and do anything. Or I have to use hiking sticks. So in about two weeks, I get my cortisone shot. And we'll see if I am back to normal. Because I can't stand this. But anyway, yeah, there were some big stories the last couple of days. And some articles to note. And the first one, of course. Oh, shit. You damn asses. Anyway, the Supreme Court heard arguments about old Trump. Being on, uh, being taken off the ballot in Colorado, and I have talked about this and said that basically this, uh, it's not going to happen because, and of course we know the court's going to rule for Trump anyway, no matter what the argument. But he hasn't been convicted of anything yet, and E. Jean Carroll's case was not. A criminal case it was a civil case so the 14th amendment would have nothing to do with that but it isn't going to happen and then you have definitions of insurrection you have all that kind of stuff so they're going to rule in favor of trump to stay on the ballot and actually i don't know why the hell people like like those fools on democratic underground i don't know what they're thinking if they think that it's better for biden if if he's not running against Trump, Trump is not going to get reelected unless Democrats stay home. It's not going to happen. I think it's less likely to happen this time than it was the last time. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think I am. And of course, everything is going to depend on the battleground states, the handful of battleground states. But the media are still kind of licking off his backside and all of that stuff. They've been doing that. While at the same time, I'm reminded, <clears throat> and I'm sorry this fucking glare, I hate it. That's why I don't like to do videos this time of day. But I'm reminded, and I wasn't alive then, or was just a baby, when old Joseph McCarthy, you know, he was that senator from Minnesota, or not Minnesota, Wisconsin, back in the 50s, late 40s and into the 1950s until alcoholism got the better of him. And he died in 1957, I believe it was. But he was, of course, famous for the red baiting. You know, there was all this worry about what was going to happen in the world because of, you know, the nuclear bomb had had been used to end World War II and was used on the Japanese. And then the Russians wouldn't move out of the Eastern European bloc. So there was all this Cold War shit. So there was all this paranoia about a communist under your bed. And it was the, year, the uh, era of loyalty oaths and all this kind of crap. But old McCarthy made a comment about the jackal pack in the media, which, in retrospect, in his era, is laughable because the people he regarded as part of the jackal pack was the late, great Edward R. Murrow and others of his type. They were low-key, but they didn't mince words about being critical. And, of course, McCar uh, Merle, Merle was the most famous journalist, broadcast journalist, anyway, who went, up against, who went up against McCarthy and criticized his methods and his persecution of various individuals. And they ha there's video of what of, uh, Merle and his See It Now broadcasts that focused on Joseph McCarthy, and that was just right around the time I was born, and maybe just before that. But McCarthy may have been a little bit uh, exaggerating about the media back then. He couldn't take criticism. But I'll tell you, these days, 
the braying pack of jackals in the media certainly apply today. And yesterday was probably one of the all-time low points of American journalists that have been completely brainwashed by UK-style journalism, so-called yellow journalism, and, ha and has all but destroyed American journalism, which was much more serious, a lot less focused on personalities and quirks and all this shit. This, th yesterday was not only the day of the arguments in front of the Supreme Court about the um, Colorado ballot deal, but it was also the day that there was a report that came out and it completely exonerated Joseph Biden regarding those documents uh, and that he ended up turning over to the National Archives. They were, the Republicans were trying to use this as a gotcha in response to what went on with Trump and his documents. And of course, with Biden, they found nothing. Zip. Zilch. But that should have been the end of it. And the individual who came up with the report, uh, he should have had his report looked over before releasing it. Because the person who was on the who was the investigator or whatever, uh, he or this person was from the Federalist Society. Anybody that, and I have said, anybody who is affiliated with the Federalist Society should be disqualified from any position within the federal government or state government, any kind of governmental position, because they, those members are anti-American, they're bought, they're crooked, they're corrupt. Of course, Leonard Leo's uh, little group. Anyhow, this report, this AG is called her, and her is actually a he, him, okay? And Mr. Him, or Mr. Her, let's find her. There he is. Anyway, uh, he, he, yep, he's from the Federalist Society, and there's this long, long, well, not long, but this bio about him. And he's got all the good little credentials. He was born in 1973. And, okay, where did he go to school? Oh, he went to Harvard. And then he went to Stanford Law School. So, oh, he had the right pedigree for, for uh, getting involved in federal government. And he was perfect for the Federalist Society, right? But this her, even though he completely exonerated Biden... In that case, he had to get a little bit of a dig at Biden. He said that Biden had memory issues. Now, according to this biography of him, of, him, <laughs> of her, I'm going to call him him now. You talk about misuse of pronouns, right? Anyway, with her, I looked all over, over her's Bio, bio, and there's nothing in there that says that he is qualified in any way to, he has no MD in anything, he's not a neurologist, he's not a speech pathologist, he's not a memory expert, he's nothing. He just pulled it out of his ass that Biden had some memory issues. You know, it's the cognitive. Now, these know-it-alls that are younger, tend to be younger uh, they think that stammering and stuttering, that's a sign of dementia. That's a sign of decline. Guess what? Joe Biden has been stuttering his way through politics for almost 60 years. He's been doing it. He's also famous for going and saying things that he doesn't intend to say. He, he is the gaff master. They have always said, until recently, they've always said he was prone to gaffes. He's always done it. 
His whole life he's done it. And that's not senility and that's not dementia. It's not memory problems. And he was, and when he gave his um, press conference, which was about 12 minutes, where is it at? I kind of got off on the, I kind of got off on the, on the media, but I'll get back to it. I always get distracted. But he's always had these issues. But he, her decided in that thing to put that in there for political reasons. To make Biden look bad. So Biden came on last night. And he had a 12-minute press conference. And he gave a statement. And I will tell you that he has no cognitive issues whatsoever. He has no memory issues that's anything apart what is normal for anybody at any age. He knows what in the hell he's doing. And the thing, the one part that he was just pissed off about with this her report or this or during the the questioning is that her asked him uh, if he remembered when his son Bo died. Can you imagine the absolute nerve of this asshole asking Joe Biden, who has been through more shit on a personal level than most people have ever gone through? May I remind you that right before he was inaugurated and right after he was elected, Senator of Delaware way back in 1972, he lost his wife and he lost his baby daughter in a car accident. And his two sons, Bo, who is now deceased, and Hunter were seriously injured. And then, year, fast forward uh, 40 some years later and his son Bo dies, I think, of a brain tumor. He dies of cancer. Backtrack about 20 years prior to that, or 30, and Biden himself had had a brain aneurysm. And he survived that. And he was still sharp as a tack. And he's sharp as a tack now at 81. And all you have to do is watch this clip and know it. And then when Biden got done, that's when the jackal pack started. They were yelling at him. They were doing all this damn shit, talking about his memory. They took that, they took that little dig that her had said. And they decided, they de declared, they declared that he was unfit for president, being president. They declared that in their own way. And of course, Trump has really gone downhill mentally and all kinds of stuff, but he gets a pass. He gets a free pass. But Biden, hell no. If he even stutters or says the wrong word, and I think he did during this um, thing, I think he mixed up Egypt for Mexico or Mexico for Egypt, something. Something, you know, petty that anybody could do. And they make a big thing out of it. But all you have to do is watch that video. And no, there's no cognitive issues. There's no memory issues of, that are anything of note. And he was pissed off. Because that's the one thing about him. That's the one thing is about Bo. And you don't want to go there. He didn't get mad. I mean, you know, he doesn't fly off the handle. He's always in control. He always handles things the way they should be handled. Not like Trump that just shoots his mouth off and, and sees where the shit stinks, sticks and stinks. Biden is always really measured when he talks. But anyway, yeah, that's all they focused on was his memory, so-called memory issues. So that just pissed me off because he ain't stepping down. And there were some Republican dipshits that were trying to call for the cabinet to declare the 25th Amendment. Ah, they're full of shit. 
totally, it was all, it was all about talking points and how much damage they could do to him. And of course, the fools over Democratic Underground, oh, they're wringing their hands about it. Oh, oh, this is like Comey. Oh, this is a blah, 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 blah. And it ain't gonna stick. So, anyway, there was that, and that kind of pissed me off. And then, oh, and then speaking of, and then apparently old Kelly J. Keen, and I'm not going to put the link up or anything. In the UK, she's now, I guess, allowed to form a women's party there. And that's okay in the, in the countries that have a parliamentary government. But it will never work in the United States. And the time that we did have a National Women's Party, it was Alice Paul, who was the one who wrote the Equal Rights Amendment, and I think Wolf and WDI uh, in USA should take note of it. That you trash the ERA, you trash the first wave feminists, and you trash the second wave feminists because you're too fucking ignorant and too compromised by uh, the right to do the right thing and back ERA. Anyway, that I mean, I get that shit off my my chest but anyway she alice paul was instrumental in women's suffrage and then she wanted to take the 14th amendment and extend it to women and that's what the era is simply about and this has a little biography of her and one of the other things she did is she found formed a, formed the national women's party but the National Women's Party was basically a lobbying group. It wasn't really a real political party that you could, that they, well, they could put, promote candidates to public office and they'd be under their party, like the Democrats and the Republicans. No, they worked within the existing system. To get what they wanted. So a women's party would never work here. It would be a rat fucking fringe outfit. Rat fucking because it would help siphon votes from Democrats and help Republicans. And Republicans are not women's friends. I don't give a shit what they come out with when they blather about Title IX. It should be preserved. They don't even want it to exist. And uh, protecting kids from, you know, the butchery and all that stuff. And that probably will be made illegal anyway all over the country. They don't give a shit really about that. They just want to get the women's vote to vote Republican in order to vote against their own interests. And it takes their minds off of, of abortion, which is really the issue that's going to clinch it for the Democrats. It, it is, hopefully... So what the hell? Let's see. And a few weeks ago, the Guardian noted there was a crackpot. And this is one of many that was elected in, uh, in this case, in the Oklahoma legislature. And he believes in the death penalty for women who have abortions. Because after all, fetuses are human, women are not. And that should raise the alarm bells in any human being that's got a goddamn brain that isn't brainwashed or uh, isn't uh, soaked with some lust for power using religion as a um, whatever, as a fig leaf. So, yeah, this abolish abortion, never going to happen. Yeah, ab opposition to abortion is rooted in a belief that fetuses are people. Not really. Not really. It's rooted in a belief that women are not people. They are things for men to use. And then there was a... The Atlantic had an article about... Oh, crap. i got to look over... Let's see... Oh, yeah, and it's all about mating, the mating gap. Like, we're a bunch of gorillas, and so we got to mate and got to get married because marriage is proof of adulthood. God damn, who the fuck wrote this goddamned article? And 
why women are freezing their eggs because they're waiting for the right man to show up. Well, there's not very many women doing it. They acknowledge that. And the men still are not there. Oh, God. Over it is so stupid. There are a lot of women there. They're hopeless. Um, the struggling American man is one of the few objects of bipartisan concern. Both conservatives and liberals bemoan men's underrepresentation in higher education. They have more options than women do. Their greater likelihood to die of a death of despair and the growing number of them who are not working or looking for work. But the chorus of concern mainly touches on how male decline shapes the lives of people most likely to date or marry them. That is to say women. So they're trying to... It's all anti-single people horse shit. Okay? So a few women are trying to freeze their eggs in hopes Mr. Right comes along. And of course, they got to get married. That's commitment and marriage. They go together. Hate to break it to you, author, but marriage is on the way out. And good fucking riddance that it is. And it isn't just that men have turned away. It's women have turned away. It's more women than it is men. There's, there are men who are desperate for this. And where's this thing that made me laugh out loud? Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, Phyllis uh, Chesler should get the, read this passage. Early in her career, Inhorn... This is that author that despairs, I guess, has spent more than three decades researching re assisted reproductive technologies and gender sexual relations in the Middle East. <laughs> she was struck by how many young Arab men valued and looked forward to fatherhood. <laughs> A sharp contrast with what she heard from young American women who shared sto story after story of men who simply are unwritten or commit. Commit means marriage. After Inhorn's research, I have to laugh. So you think the Middle East is something wonderful for women? What the fuck? What the goddamn fuck? You know what? how women are treated over there. What in the goddamn fuck? So let's just, match, let's just match Middle Eastern men with American women and everybody will be happy. What the damn fuck. But the plight, oh God, it's, this is all the same old shit I've read for decades. That they're trying to con women into marriage and babies. And it's just proof of maturity and stability and all this stuff that all of it has been debunked. And so why do they think women are desperate to have families? Why does she think that? Educated women. Why does she think that? And so she tries to use the uh, egg freezing um, deal, angle, because that proves women are desperate to find husbands, but the men just won't commit. Women aren't doing it either. And most of all, her book captures the pain of women who struggle to fulfill the human desires for companionship and parenthood. Pain that is too long overlooked in the broader discussions about egg freezing. But it's all over the goddamn media, you asshole, whoever wrote this stupid thing. So who's this author? Oh, she says, this is her book, In Motherhood on Ice, The Mating Gap and Why Women Freeze Their Eggs. So this is more... Bullshit, and she's a medical anthropologist at Yale. So, she's. this is about interviewing 150 women who have frozen their eggs. Most of them heterosexual women who wanted a partner they could have and raise children with. She concluded that contrary to the community commonly held notion, the most professional women were freezing their eggs so they could lean into their jobs. Egg freezing was not about their careers. It was about being single. Yeah, isn't it terrible to be single and in very unstable relationships with men who are unwilling to commit to them? So they're, so being single is bad. It's really a bad thing. But it's, it's just, God, what a load of shit. More bullshit. Trying to con women into this crap. And yeah, you can feel a little sad for whatever these women 
have haven't found anybody but you know what that's not what's going on it's women that are actually not bothering with men at all and this woman needs to grow up and realize that being single is not a bad thing the commitment and marriage are not the same thing marriage and adulthood are not the same thing and all that other shit all that other 1950s shit. So anyway, I'm sorry about ranting. There was a lot to rant about in this video. And God damn it, I'm 25 minutes into this. And at least my leg feels a little bit better. So anyway, that is going to be it for me today.